Hey, welcome back to the channel, everyone. There's been a lot of people wondering if you can do professional grade animation on an iPad. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the latest animation project that I just finished using my iPad Pro 11 inch and the latest 2D animation software for the iPad called Calipeg. Once this project is released and out in the wild, I'll share that with you. Uh, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, I just don't want to talk about it too much because I don't know how much I can get away with, but I'll share that with you guys when it comes out. Until then, check out this intro. Okay, welcome back guys. Hey, if this is your first time on this channel, consider subscribing and hit that little bell so then that way every time I come out with content, you'll be alerted. And basically what we do on this channel is we learn, make, and repeat. I'm going through and creating all of these animation and art related projects, kind of like artist alfresco and uh, all these tutorials and everything, especially like right now with everything that's happening in the world. Once we're done with all of these stay at home orders and everything, then we can go out into the real world and actually have a lot of information that we can make and tell our own stories. We're gonna head over to the iPad now, but before we do that, uh, there's a few things that I wanna point out. You're going to continue to hear me say, blocking in or roughing in. You're gonna hear me say a rough sketch, which is just a little bit above blocking in. Then you're gonna hear line art and color. So that's the process that I use. I use the blocking to time out the animation and make sure, and I'm not wasting a lot of time doing that. It's just really rough shapes. And then once the motion is down and I'm convinced that that's what I wanna see, then I go into the rough sketches, which is a little bit more of the character being brought in and you can see what that character is going to look like in those certain frames. And then we clean them up by like doing the line art and then in a different layer, I'll do the color. So you'll see, let's go to the iPad. The story behind this animation is we have this turtle that's going to be base jumping into the aquarium. And if I hit play, we see there he jumps in and then he swims around and then he climbs back up on the cliff and then he dives back in. And the neat thing about this animation is I built it specifically so it'll be in a loop. If the client wants to have a longer version or if they want to go from, I think this animation might be, it's under a minute long, but if they want it to go for say an hour, all they have to do is loop it and then loop it for as long as you want. Okay, so that's the blocking in. And that's on its own layer. And I'm gonna pull this up so we can see all of the layers and uh, we'll, get, we'll go through all of these layers. The reason why this turtle is super tiny is because that's the eventual size of the turtle. But what you don't wanna do is draw a character that small. I mean, I guess you can, but I like to actually have like real estate. So what I did was I took that layer, made a copy. You can do that by going to this hamburger menu and then going up to this icon here that says duplicate with drawings and that'll make a direct copy of that layer. I'm gonna hide that one and show you the bigger version. We can even, let's unlock that and turn that up so we can see. And again, if I hit play, we see the animation that we're going to be working on. The next step after blocking in the animation and roughing out the character, the artwork, is cleaning up the artwork. And here we see our character is actually coming to life now. He's not just a circle and a D shape. He's actually a turtle. And I drew that on top of the the bigger blocking in layer. So if we hit play, we see there's the dive and then he swims behind the cliff and then he climbs back up and then he dives again. And now we're starting to see like the building process of the animation. And it's a lot like if you're doing a still, you start with the rough 
and then you have a cleanup and then you go into line work and shading and all that good stuff. It's always a gradual process. And the cool thing is once you get your process down, you figure it out, then it just becomes second nature. Everything gets easier and easier the more you practice. The next step in the animation process is to actually do the ink lines. If we tap this button up here, that makes our timeline go away and we can center the stage or the canvas. We can center the canvas a little bit better. And then we hit play. And there is our base jumping turtle, all inked up. You're gonna notice that there's a couple frames in here with color. That's because I accidentally, when I was going in and coloring, I was on the wrong layer. And then finally, when I figured out that I was on the wrong layer is already too late and I didn't wanna redo it all. So it worked out. And now that we're talking about color, we might as well turn on the color layer because that's the next step. You have your line work and then you can actually use that line work as a reference layer for your color layer. When you're doing colors, there's a nice little shortcut that Calipeg has. The way that they handle color fills is amazing. If you wanted to go in and color this by hand, you just make sure that you have the proper brush and you're on a different layer. So I can come in here and color away and it's not going to damage that line. It's not gonna affect the line layer at all. But there's this really cool functionality that Calipeg has. If you have artwork on one layer and those shapes on that art layer are closed, all you have to do is double tap and that shape will be full of the color that's active, the color that's showing on the top right. I'm gonna undo that because if you notice, if I double tap, you see that there's a gap between the color and the line. So if we double tap here, we get this little slider here, and here is where we can determine how much influence we want that fill to take. So I'm gonna undo that again. I'm gonna double tap with my finger, if, because if you double tap with the pen, all you're gonna do is put ink down, right? So I'm going to double tap with my finger and it fills, and then if I drag this right and left, you can see that the gap between the paint and the line work. And if you go too far, it's gonna fill up the entire canvas. And this is what's cool. You can come in here and color and then close that shape with the color. And if you double tap, then it fills again. So that's a really cool way to color. And it's really fast. So we don't need that layer. So I'm gonna delete that and turn the color back on. And it's a good idea while you're working on this to just constantly be checking your animation just to make sure that it is what you want. And not to mention, like, it's really cool. Like, we're, we're animating a turtle base jumping. How cool is that? I'm gonna do the same thing, the same process with the splash that I did with the turtle. I blocked it in, I rough sketched, then I inked, and then I colored. There's this flipping thing that you can do in Calipeg with three fingers, you can scrub up and down, and you can go back and forth on the timeline, and that's how you can figure out how things move. And so I can come in here and loosely come in and block in the animation that I want to see. And then I hold down three fingers, I scrub up. You see how it moves to the next frame. And now I can actually block in a little bit more. And now I feel like we're cheating, so let's turn this off. And if I scrub, oh, you know what we need to do is turn on onion skinning. Let me do one more frame of this animation so then I can show you the differences between the frames that are about to happen and the frames that just happened. Okay, so for this one, we want it to come a little bigger. Maybe do like that. Maybe it's actually breaking up. We see the back of the cone where the turtle is coming in. Because when you're diving, when you hit the water, it actually turns into a cone that then swallows you up and then maybe we're starting to see some of this water coming out here and then we can scroll up and then like maybe that water droplet goes up maybe this is starting to come out this way too yeah there you go okay so i'm going to come to the middle of my animation and if you notice you can see the black, which is our current frame or our current sheet. 
we have our frames and sheets live within that frame. And why there's a difference is because these are the frames and those are like the frames per second and everything. Oh, speaking of which, I did this animation at 12 frames a second, which I know I've said this in the past, 12 frames a second, because the more frames per second you have, the more drawings you need to make. That's lazy me talking. I wish I would have done this animation at 24 frames a second because it would have been a lot smoother. The more frames gives you more flexibility. And the, the cool thing about doing 24 frames a second is you can come in here and stretch out these sheets to multiple frames. And that's why you want different frames versus sheets. Again, back in the good old days when people were talking about animating on ones and animating on twos and animate, even animating on threes, if you have one sheet per frame, those frames are going to be flying by. So the action is going to be super fast. Whereas if you have one sheet and then it holds for two frames, it's going to be a little slower. So this karate chop that for some reason just came out of nowhere I would probably do the motion down on ones and then that hold for two frames and depending like if I'm gonna slam my hand down because I'm trying to make a point listen that's about what six frames so you know there's a lot of flexibility that comes with that understanding of sheets versus frames and stretching out those sheets over multiple frames. And getting back to the onion skinning. So we see the green, we see the black, and we see the red. So long story short, the green artwork that you see are the frames that already happened. And the red ones are the ones that are about to happen. If you're trying to in between the different sheets, you need to know which ones are about to come up and the which ones that have already happened because that will help you figure out where those, in this instance, where those water droplets are gonna happen. Turn my splash layer, the rough splash layer back on. The next step would be obviously the lines. So this animation altogether is like 30 seconds long, I think. But what happens if you want to review just one section of the animation? What I'm gonna do is make sure that this layer is unlocked and then I'm gonna come up here to where it says select all sheets. Now, if I hit play, it's only going to play those sheets or those frames. And now that I'm very comfortable with the line work, I went through and I colored the splash. And again, let's hit play. And if I wanted to get really detailed, I can come in here and put like some highlights and even some shadow layers on here, but this animation is going to be super tiny anyway. So as long as you have the splash effect and you're selling the fact that this turtle has landed in the water, like it's good enough. Okay. So now that we have our splash colored, let's turn our base jumping turtle back on. And there you go. Dare I say professional grade animation on the iPad Pro using Calipeg is true. That just happened. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you know anyone that's trying to get into animation, 2D animation and filmmaking, please send this video on over their way and tell them about the channel because we are growing and we're growing quick. And I want you guys to be able to come out here and learn, make, and repeat. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell that's right next to the subscribe button. I mean, it's only like that far away, right? If you're already there, you might as well click it. All the cool kids are doing it. That way you'll be alerted every time I come out with something. Uh, I got a lot of things happening. I got a lot of really cool things that are about to come out. And I think that you guys are going to enjoy it. All right. That's it for me. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.